Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the latest resin printer from Elegoo, the Saturn IV Ultra. As a new resin printer, besides the improvements in print speed and resolution, it has some very unique features that may put it one step ahead of everyone else. Let's take a look at what we can get from the Saturn IV Ultra. In terms of resolution, it has a 10-inch 12K mono LCD with an improved light source, which claims to deliver even more light and result in smoother surfaces and improved print quality. It has a build volume of 218 by 122 by 220 millimeters. Normally, the only part that moves on a resin printer is the Z-axis. On this machine, the Z-axis uses dual linear rails. Additionally, the resin tray can also move at a tilted angle to help the model release easier. The number one issue users face in resin printing is models not sticking to the build platform. While a traditional resin printer finishes printing one layer, it will lift the Z-axis to pull up the print and let it release from the tray. However, when the print sticks too well to the tray, it may detach from the platform and the print fails. The Saturn IV Ultra addresses this with its movable resin tray, which releases the print from a tilted angle, like removing a sticker from a surface at an angle, making it much easier than pulling it straight up. This method also minimizes the Z-travel, which normally takes longer than the curing time of a layer, as it has to move the Z-axis back and forth. As a result, this claims to print two times faster than the previous model, the Saturn III Ultra. The film on the resin tray has also been upgraded to their new PFA film, which claims to be a non-stick surface, making prints easier to release. All of these combined should increase the overall successful print rate compared to a traditional resin printer. Besides this new releasing method, it also has auto-leveling, which uses sensors to adjust the distance between the platform and LCD screen, eliminating the need to place a card between them and manually adjust four screws on the platform for leveling. Therefore, you won't see any leveling screws on the platform, and you just need to push and lift the lever to install and remove it. There is no setup required, so this machine can print right out of the box. Instead of being controlled by a single microcontroller, it uses a Linux-based OS and a nicer touchscreen UI, which can display more information related to the print, as well as update to the latest firmware automatically. For network features, it allows you to connect to your 2.4G or a faster 5G network and send the print directly from the slicer to the printer in seconds. Of course, you can use a USB drive to print completely offline if you prefer. For other features, it has a built-in camera to monitor your print in real time, record time-lapse videos, and support fail print detection. Another sensor for resin leveling detection will pause the print when the resin level falls below a certain level. The LCD screen is protected by a tempered glass protector, and the platform is laser engraved instead of being a plain aluminum piece, which allows for better print removal after the print is done. It seems this machine is packed with tons of new features. I would like to thank Elegoo for sending us this machine and for sponsoring today's video. And with that, let's get started. The machine came in one box, and it's well protected by air cushions and foam. The whole machine is packed inside a bag, so we can just lift it up and out. After removing all the protective materials, we have the machine itself, a drip tray, power supply, and a box with some tools. I will just remove all the protective film under the tray and on the LCD, connect the power, Wi-Fi antenna, insert the USB drive, and the machine is ready to use. It will start with a self-check screen. The Z-axis and the tray are moving to check themselves, and it will also check the fans, UV light, and other components, and everything is done in around 30 seconds. I will also set up the Wi-Fi. As you can see, it shows my 2.4G and 5G networks, as well as the networks around my house. I will just connect it to my own Wi-Fi network and continue. It then detects the latest firmware available, and I will just let it update. After a while, it will restart and we are ready to print. Let's pour some resin into the tray. I will start with some water washable resin, as I prefer to just use tap water to wash it instead of having to use 99% isopropyl alcohol. I will start with a sample G-code, the Elegoo Rook inside the USB drive. The resin tray is moving down and finding the correct distance and starting the print. As you can see, the release motion is mainly performed by the resin tray instead of the Z-axis. Take a look from the side, and it is indeed releasing at an angle to let the layer naturally come off from the tray. As the curing time of each layer is 2.5 seconds, including the releasing time, it'll take around 5-6 to six seconds per layer.
After the print reaches a certain height, the Z-axis starts moving slowly, but the releasing still relies on the moving resin tray. The print finishes in 1 hour and 47 minutes. I will remove the print and drop it into the tap water tank and wash it for 10 minutes. Then, I will transfer it to the curing box and let it cure for 3 minutes. The print looks pretty good. The surface is still a bit wet. You can see the overhanging part is printed without support, so some cleanup may still be needed. The tiny text on the stairs inside the rook are clear, so it seems everything is working fine and this printer can really print right out of the box without any calibration. Next, I will use the slicer to slice multiple objects and print them all together at once. Normally, if I put that many objects in one single print, some of them may fail, so let's see how the new releasing mechanism works. The preview looks normal and I will just send it to the printer over the network. It took around 20 seconds to complete. I will just start the print and launch the monitor screen to check if the camera is also working and the platform is dropping towards the resin tray as normal. The print took 1 hour and 26 minutes to finish. It's even faster than the test print chess piece. As I set the height of all models to 40mm, it still only takes 2.5 seconds to cure a layer. As you can see, everyone is still here and no one is missing. I will go through the same process to wash and cure all models. The details of all models are incredible, considering the printing time of everything is just less than 1.5 hours, so I'm super happy with this print. Next, I will print a lizard which I printed on a 14K printer. I will now print it on this 12K Saturn IV Ultra and see if I can spot any differences. I will use the Chi2 box to slice it, and once again the preview is slow. The other slicer, Voxel Danced, is faster, but I like the Chi2 box network and remote monitoring features, so I will just use it to send it to the printer over the network. The print took exactly 2 hours to finish. I printed this lizard with support. The flat bottom can also come off easily. I removed the support and then cured it for 5 minutes. The texture of the lizard looks very real. Let's take a closer look. The fine details of its head are just amazing. Let's do a comparison with another one printed with the 14K resin printer. I really can't tell the difference between a 12K or a 14K as they both look super real. Finally, I will make some functional parts with nylon-like resin. It's not nylon, but it's supposed to provide better strength and stiffness compared to regular resin. I will print a phone tripod mount, which is my new design inspired by Universal Phone Tripod Mount by Jake Jake. As the nylon-like resin is not water washable, I will soak it in Sunlu resin detergent for 5 minutes and use my secret weapon for resin printing, a pair of long chopsticks to take it out from the jar. I will cure it a little longer this time for 6.5 minutes. The surface is still a bit wet, and I will let it dry overnight. After about 10 hours, the surface is completely dry, and the parts fit nicely with each other. This tripod phone mount is super rigid compared with those printed by PLA. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. I think the best feature is the movable resin tray. It can effectively release the print and even print multiple objects at once without a single failed print. The print speed is also faster, as the time wasted in the process in resin printing is to lift up the Z-axis to release the print and then move back down, using the resin tray for release, which is much faster, even though the curing time of the layer is the same. 
to auto leveling. It just prints right out of the box and it works. You don't even need to think about leveling. The most confusing part for resin printing beginners is leveling the platform with the card or paper, because as you adjust one side, the other side just feels too loose or too tight. For FDM printing, you will see your print isn't sticking well by the first layer, but for resin printing, you may not realize it until it's been printing for an hour and you finally see nothing is on the platform. This auto-leveling set the distance between the platform and the film of the resin tray, which also contributed to the high successful printing rate of this machine. 3. The built-in camera also allows you to monitor the print. With its AI feature, it can detect failed prints, but since it has no failed prints yet, I'm unable to test it out, but I think it's still a good thing. 4. The network feature works flawlessly. Just slice the print and send it to your printer over your local network, and no third-party cloud service is required. If you're working on a prototype that refers to print completely offline, you can simply not connect the printer to the network and use the USB drive. 5. The small details are also well designed. The cover is a lift-up style like a mask when you are wearing gloves and handling the print is really handy. There is also an additional drip tray for you to protect the body of the machine. Now for the cons. 1. There are two slices available for this machine. You can use the Chi2 Box or the Voxel Dance Tango. The Voxel Dance Tango is a better slicer in terms of slicing speed. The layer by layer preview is smooth. However, the latest version's network feature has been disabled. I've used that feature with the Saturn 3 Ultra before, but now the send button is grayed out as the release notes stated that they're removing the network feature, and I honestly think that's a pretty huge step back, or they maybe just want to charge a fee for this feature now. I saw other users having the same issues, so Voxel Dance Tango is now an offline only slicer. On the other hand, the Chi2 box has complete network features to manage your printer and do remote printing and monitoring. However, the preview features of the Chi2 box are super laggy, and even my PC with an Intel i9 9th gen processor with 64GB of RAM, 2TB of SSD, and NVIDIA 4070 Ti GPU, I think this hardware should be more than enough for a slicer, but the layer preview is more laggy than any slicer I've ever used. You can either use the fast slicer and print offline with the USB drive, or you have to use the laggy slicer and send prints over the network. As both slicers are from third-party vendors, let's see what Elegoo can do to communicate with these vendors for this part. 2. The auto-leveling feature does indeed greatly improve the success rate of prints. However, for certain prints such as my phone tripod mount, when printing without support, I notice that the first few layers are compressed too tightly, resulting in something like the elephant foot effect seen in FDM printing. While this isn't a problem for prints like the lizard with support, where the base and support are removed, it becomes crucial for prints requiring dimensional accuracy at the bottom. In those cases, it may be necessary to raise the model a few millimeters away from the platform and print with support, providing an option for users to choose whether they want to squeeze the first layer extra to ensure platform adhesion or just do normal squeezing for higher accuracy would be great. 3. The touchscreen is mostly fine. The only thing I don't like is the text spacing. For example, when the print is finished, it's really difficult to read the exact printing time. It could be formatted better. When it's printing, the screen will switch back to the simple screen, which only shows the percentage in time, no matter if you try to switch to the screen with the layer preview or the model preview. It just switches back after a few minutes. It would be better to stay at the screen that the user prefers. 4. It doesn't come with a small USB-powered air filter like most other Elegoo machines. Instead, it comes with an opening at the back for you to connect a hose to exhaust the air outside. An optional air purifier is also available for purchase which I don't have. It should work better than the small USB air filter, but it will cost you another $135. Besides that, I have no complaints about this printer. In terms of the design, hardware, and build quality, it all worked really well. And I think Elegoo did an amazing job this time. When I do 3D printing, 95% of the time I use FDM, as it requires no post-processing. Just start the print, wait for a while, and the print is ready to use. That's unlike resin printing, as there's no washing, no curing, and even though I have the Mercury washing and curing station, which makes things easier, it still requires two extra steps, but that's just always how resin printing has worked. 
I believe the Saturn IV Ultra is a capable machine and does make resin printing easier. Whether you're new to resin printing or have had negative experiences in the past, advancements in tech on the Saturn IV Ultra will probably lead to a different experience. On my website, auroratechchannel.com, I didn't have a recommendation list for resin printers as I'm honestly just not a big fan of it. But after testing this machine, I will create a resin printer recommendation list to include this Saturn IV Ultra. It will be the first and only resin printer I recommend for now. I hope to see more resin printers like this one to make resin printing even easier. If you're interested in the Saturn IV Ultra, I've included its link as well as the link to my website, auroratechchannel.com, where you can find my recommendation list and a price tracker that monitors 150 popular machines with information updated hourly. All relevant links are in the description. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.